It's the start of the late shift on a Friday night at Downey Regional Medical Center. The emergency room waiting area is already standing room only, filled with patients suffering all kinds of ailments. All right, sir. Pull out this board from out from under you. A few years ago, many of them would have gone to other nearby hospitals like King Drew or Freeman Memorial. But now those places are closed, so the sick and injured end up here. It's been going on for about two weeks now. Okay. Just kind of getting worse and worse each day. Gotcha. And today it feels it's the worst, which is why you call me. Unless have a private doctor? No. But tonight, like many others, the Downey ER has been pushed to the limit. The patients who are already here are consuming the staff's attention. So at 10 p.m., head nurse Nanette Bucci tries to take action closing the doors to new ambulance arrivals. So at this present time, 10 o'clock, we're going to actually close because we have some critical patients, several critical patients, and no beds within the hospital. We're closed. Extremis. Okay, go ahead. Cardiac arrest. I try to let them know that we're closed, but in this kind of situation, especially like a cardiac arrest, it doesn't matter, they need to go, because that needs like immediate intervention, so they can't wait. When this 67-year-old heart patient collapsed, Downey Regional was the closest ER. Even though our department is pretty stressed, we needed to take this patient. So a dozen doctors, nurses, and emergency medical technicians are now called upon to save one patient. The staff at Downey is proud of the fact that they save lives. But the question for this hospital, and a host of hospitals across California, is how will they survive and continue to provide care into the future. It was just a few months ago that Downey Regional, one of LA County's best community hospitals, found itself on the brink of disaster. Its chief operating officer, Rob Fuller, says the not-for-profit facility was a month or two away from bankruptcy. We went to the financial side. We found everything in the financial side was broken. What was broken was a system that now took in a lot less money than was going out for patient care. Costs were rising rapidly, and the funds from medical insurers were shrinking. Like most hospitals, Downey Regional stayed afloat by using private insurance payments to subsidize the costs of those on government assistance or Medi-Cal. It's estimated that Downey loses $1,000 a night for every Medi-Cal patient they treat. We provide about 10000 patient days a year of Medi-Cal service, so I lose roughly $10 million a year by being a participant in the Medi-Cal program. So I have to find ways to offset that. So it falls on the private insurers. We have to negotiate the rates up as high as we possibly can to offset those losses in the state-sponsored program. But that balance is being thrown out of whack as more and more Californians lose their jobs and their health insurance and wind up on the government plan where reimbursement rates haven't gone up in nearly 20 years. In fact, California ranks 51st behind Puerto Rico and every other state for reimbursements. Federal regulations require that you treat anybody that comes to your door. You have to screen them and you have to make sure that they're not in some sort of emergent condition before you can ask about their ability to pay. I kind of twisted and gave out. And Those that are now losing their jobs because of the recession and aren't going to have insurance, they're not going to have the ability to pay the hospital and the state doesn't have the ability at this point to pay the hospital. Um, so it's, it's really, really getting tough for us to survive in this area. And according to veteran nurse Deb Gale, the problem is compounded because those patients are coming in with more severe problems than in the past. When you look at the trends 20 years ago, you wouldn't have predicted what you see today in the ER? No. No. When I first started, we had about 58 patients a day. Now we see about 150 patients per day, and they're much sicker than they were 20 years ago. Much sicker because they've put off primary medical care until their condition became critical. Before you had a patient that would come in and they would have pneumonia and that would be their only disease process. Now they come in and they've got HIV, they have diabetes, they've got uh, hypertension, and they have pneumonia. And sicker patients, many with minimal or no insurance, cost more to care for. Making things even worse, as patients have become sicker, the number of care facilities in Southern California has been shrinking. The problem is just lack of hospital beds. You have the I-105 quarter, which used to have seven large ERs servicing the area. Now there's just three. So many hospitals have disappeared that in some parts of L.A., there are fewer than one hospital bed per thousand people.
you know, we've got a situation where about 56 percent of all of the hospitals with emergency rooms are operating in the red. Many of them have been operating in the red for longer than two, three years at a time, and that's an unsustainable policy. There's only so much philanthropy, there's only so much reserves available to cover those kinds of losses. This is pretty much the epicenter for everything that's wrong in healthcare. But if it starts to go wrong, it starts to go wrong in LA first, and then spreads elsewhere. And we've seen that on a number of fronts. In the short time it took to stabilize that cardiac arrest patient, the cost in manpower and machines is estimated to be as high as $10,000. The question for administrators is how long can they provide care at a loss before they just have to go out of business? And when any hospital shuts down, it affects everyone. If you get into an accident, you want to be taken to the nearest hospital with the emergency room and the capability of taking care of you. And it doesn't matter what kind of insurance card you have in your wallet, if that hospital is down, you're going to be affected by it.